Hey, David from Redneck Garage. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that I experienced with my Jeep um, after I bought it. I bought this Jeep from some cat down in the country and um, when I was purchasing it, it didn't start every time that we turned the key and he says, hey, I just put a new fuel pump on it. I was like, huh. Well, I didn't worry about it too much. I thought it could be a battery connection or I thought it could be, um, you know, maybe a relay issue, something like that. So I brought it home, started doing the restoration on the Jeep. Well, as we went along, I've got it torn apart, took the dash out, took everything apart, and, you know, the other day I had to move it to measure for the lift kit. Well, it didn't start. And I messed around it, messed around it, messed around it. I left the key on, and finally, um, the Jeep started up. I heard the fuel pump kick in. I was like, oh, okay, started right up, moved it, did the same thing, trying to move it back. So I knew it had an issue. So, I guess it's like a mini rant at this point. So, I go um, to the Wrangler Forum, where I'm a member, and I post a, a, a question. Hey, I know this might be a dumb question. I know I could probably search. Does anybody know right off the top of their head what this could be? You know, explain that I turned the key, nothing happens, yakety schmackety. Um, a lot of people evidently looked at this. It was like over 100 views of it, but only one guy responded. Okay. So his response was, you need to check your fuel pressure. It's your fuel pump. It's got to be the fuel pump. Check your, get your pressure gauge out and check your fuel rail. And I responded back to him. I said, well, you know, uh, doesn't seem like it's fuel related. I said, I've taken starting fluid and sprayed in it. And it still didn't start, so I'm not getting sparked. So that would kind of eliminate the whole fuel thing to start with. So then he comes back, and he, evidently he's an authority on Jeeps, supposedly, evident, way more than me. And he comes back and he says, well, um, you don't want to do what I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you how to do this. This is the only cat that responded. So I, I appreciate that he did respond. I'm thinking to myself, if you're responding, at least you should know what you're talking about. I was really looking for somebody that just experienced this, not somebody to give me troubleshooting tips because I've got every manual in the world for the Jeep. ba bomb. So then I do another couple searches on uh, the Internet about key on, waiting, delayed start, uh, things like that. And what turns out that it may be my ECM. Well, I didn't have my cluster gauges in. I took those out. I redid the gauges and everything. So I plugged that back in, and sure enough, turn the key, no check engine light. There's your first clue. Make sure that, and you probably forget about it. You know, you don't really think about that check engine light. But when you turn on your key, I put it in to check codes. When you put your key in, make sure that the check engine light comes on. So here's a little video of me turning the key on, and then in the middle of this, you see me get out. Well, what I'm doing when I get out is I take a, a, a big, thick screwdriver, and I bang the crap out of the ECM, and then you see the result. Take off the ECM. And it's going to be right here. You have to take out your windshield washer jug, which I already did that. And we'll take off our main harness here, which is, I don't know, is it 8 or 9? I think it's an 8 millimeter. It's an eight. We haven't worked on it 
it off today? No, I've been working, dude. Well, that's too bad. Well, that's I, don't know. I don't know why this won't come off. You want to stay here and work on this? Not really. Isn't it supposed to be nice tomorrow? I don't know. I usually take it one day at a time. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's what I thought, too. What did he say? It's rain tomorrow. Hey, don't be a meteorologist on me. There's Randy. What'd he say? Somebody that predicts the weather. I just need to do some one thing real quick, pull off this computer. There you go. And there it is. Nice multi pin connector. Yep. We're gonna open it before I send it off. You want to see if the caps are bad? It's usually what goes wrong with them. Could be moisture in them. Well, that didn't help. You see all the mud and shit? Yeah. It looks like he had it underwater. Yeah. I'm curious what the... What's in between this? Never mind. What's in between what? No, just the way this the connector's made. And I, that's all the wire. It's just, there's nothing in there. The wire is going to the pins. Oh. Yeah, but this really needs to be cleaned out, too. Yeah, I'll take some. There's a guy on eBay that rebuilds these. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever that means. <laughs> that mud didn't help it, for sure. Damn. This is like the... Yeah, you're right. It's like you almost had this thing submerged. Yeah. I see. They they put it all in resin. Yeah, you gotta take that out. I oh, guess. Oh no, that's a gel. I mean, uh, like a almost like. Usually, you're the gel. caps are what go bad. Mm -hmm. oh, for sixty nine bucks, he rebuilds this thing. Oh. Probably just gives you a new one. No, he they, you can't buy a new one. But anyway, there it is. We're gonna send that back. There it is. All right. So clearly. And obviously, the issue isn't the fuel pump, as Mr. I know everything about Jeeps. I've got two million um, posts on the Jeep forum, as he he was incorrect. Uh, my first inclination was it was something electrical and not the fuel pump. Uh, so then I get on eBay and I ordered a used one from California and it was like 70 bucks. But there's also a cat on eBay that will repair your um, ECM. So this cat for $64 on eBay, Kevin Daniel K, I don't know, something like that, uh, is claiming that for $64 bucks he's going to uh, repair service for Jeep Cherokee Wrangler ECM computer YJ, XJ, ZJ. So I'm going to send it to this cat, pay him $64, bucks, and uh, we'll, we'll see what the turnaround is. Today is the 18th. I'm going to send it off on the 19th, and then we're going to see how long it takes him to get it back and if the stupid thing works when he's done. Uh, but he's in Valley Stream, New York. So, uh, Kev Kev, we're sending it to you. If you read in the description, it says if you have a delayed start, if your check engine light doesn't come on, everything that happens. Well, evidently on these ECMs, the capacitors can go bad, and there may be something else that goes goes in it, goes wrong with it that he knows how to fix or something. But for 64 bucks. I have the ECM that I'm sending to him in New York, and we're going to see if he can fix it and send it back and do a little review when it comes back to see if it works or not. For 64 bucks, that's a pretty heck of a deal. So what do we got coming up on Redneck Garage? Well, we've got the rest of the lift kit installation. I got my sway bar fixed up. I got new bushings for it. I got it off. Um, I figured out how to get these off, those stinking things. And also, if you watched the video on the uh, lift kit, you saw me complaining that I didn't have a longer ratcheting breaker bar. Well, let me tell you something about that. Here's one at uh, Lowe's that I looked at. This thing's like 70 bucks. Okay? So I'm thinking, if I own a Redneck Garage, how am I going to do that? I took a Sears half-inch ratchet that I've got like six or seven in my toolbox from old sets that I've purchased, right? And I ground off the edges of it and I went to La Home Depot and I bought this long three-quarter inch piece of pipe and I ground it off long enough and I walloped the head of it till it went down in this pipe 
And now I got a 36 inch ratchet. <laughs> And that is a redneck tool, brothers and sisters, let me tell you. So we got a lot of stuff coming up on the Jeep, and uh, let's turn some more wrenches. <laughs>